All right. So, hey everyone. Welcome to the last day in our Life Skills KU series. Today we are joined by three recent graduates, Morgan, Marco, and Lauren. They all went to KU and they all have unique experiences. They all had unique experiences after graduation. Yeah, it's been so nice to hear from the experts this week on building your credit, establishing your budget, and then talking about a little bit about confidence, networking, and finding our skills. And so we thought it would be a nice transition to talk to some KU students or KU recent alums who were students you know, at the same time that most of us were here today. So now let's get to our guests, Marco, Lauren, and Morgan. Thank you for being here. And you guys are just going to talk a little bit to everybody about, you know, how you've navigated um, you know, personal finances, finding a job, networking, and growing in your professional career post-grad. So I want to start by introducing you guys to my sister, Morgan Wilkerson. She graduated from the business school in 2018 with a finance and marketing degree. She started working with Ernst & Young after college and then recently shifted careers. So Morgan's always been somebody I've looked up to um, both personally and professionally. And so I'm really excited for her to be able to share, you know, with you guys what she's gone through. So Morgan, go ahead and talk to us about how your finance education kind of affected the way you handle your personal finances. And then just how KU prepared you for work. And when you realized it was kind of time to change paths, I'll hand it off to you. Well, thank you, Kate. That was so nice. What a way to start. Um, hi, everyone. Like Kate said, I'm Morgan. I graduated in 2018. Um, and like kind of what she said, I graduated with a finance degree and Having that background, I think, you know, education where I started with a great foundation, um, not just for my day to day work, but I think for my personal finances as well. And to be honest, I think it kind of has helped me kind of stay up to date on current events and follow news um, events and whatnot, which again impacts my personal finances and my day to day, um, kind of my job currently. I would say that, you know, not just my finance classes helped me prepare for that. But I think also just kind of, you know, the day-to-day -day things that you might not always think, like working with, you know, as a team or working with professors and whatnot, it's helping me transition to like the working environment. But I'd say for personal finance-wise, I try to kind of prepare myself for like three different goals, I said, um, professionally, um, personally, and especially financially. Um, my first few paychecks I got, that was awesome to get a steady income and for, it to, for me to see it build. And every two weeks, I still got a paycheck. Um, and I was kind of boring, I would say, at the very beginning. I saved as much as I could. Um, I chose, I had the opportunity, you know, I was fortunate to move back home and I was close to where I was working. So I had no parents as roommates again. And I saved as much as I could. Um, but kind of going back to that goal, I did set a goal financially for myself and professionally. And once I hit that, I might have made a purchase of a new work first. Um, but that's kind of the fun part of it. Um, and so I think, you know, have setting those goals and setting those, you know, seeing kind of having that steady income, I was able to plan and budget and, you know, go kind of from there. And like Kate said, I transitioned jobs recently. It's kind of scary um, in a pandemic to leave a job and go start a new one. But I was able to, you know, be confident in that in my network that I've had and, you know, an opportunity business itself that I was able to make that transition. And so far, so good. Um, and again, I think, you know, just with my finance education, but also, you know, taking that planning and, you know, mixing it with what I know and what I can do, it, it, I think I've set myself up so far, again, knock on wood, um, only two years out for success. So that's a little bit about me. Kind Morgan, of that information. How would you say that you keep in contact with the professional contacts you had from your previous job to now? So do oh, you still okay. keep in contact professionally with people and how do you do so? Absolutely. Honestly, I would say I, you know, I built really great relationships with my previous job. Um, honestly, just not professionally, but I have, I would say like some really good friends I work. So I, you know, I communicate with them every so often, but honestly, LinkedIn has been an amazing resource. Um, I mean, even like Kate for, you know, Kate and Roy, both of you guys are sharing those life skills events um, and just to kind of seeing what's going on in the area, um, but also kind of keeping a pulse on old peers that I used to, you know, students or professors or, you know, admin in the business school that I, you know, built a relationship while I was there. LinkedIn's been a great resource for that. But specifically for my job, I, you know, I think, you know, building that and keeping that and maintaining just genuine relationships is huge. Um, and that's kind of how I got, you know, I found this new opportunity was a network and a connection that I had. So 
kind of continuing to maintain those is is going to only help you in the future. No, that's amazing. I know I really like to use LinkedIn. It's the social media platform I use the most, actually. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, and definitely. And Morgan, I'm going to be working at EY and their data analytics team. Oh, and very I'm cool. so excited to see what kind of opportunities it brings me to. It sounds like you really learned a lot and you really liked it there. Um, I will definitely be content contacting you for advice in the future. Thank you again for joining us. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Rod. I want to transition and talk to Marco now. Marco is a chemical engineer working at QIT. His college experience looked a little different as he started as a student athlete at a smaller school and transferred a few times before landing at KU. Marco, can you talk to us about what changed in your career goals as you changed schools and how you went about finding work and professional opportunities? Yeah, of course. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on today, Roy. Uh, so like Roy said, I started at a small school in North Dakota uh, actually didn't even have engineering. And so I started as a math chemistry double major just because I wanted to pursue um, and continue my career as a student athlete. Um, some things didn't work out. So I ended up transferring to the University of Kansas where I was able to pursue chemical engineering and also continue my career in wrestling as a coach at my old high school, which was a, a wonderful bonus I was able to do at the same time. Um, and so shifting uh, majors like that, I wouldn't go back and change anything I did the way I did. Uh, but one pretty major impact that I, I realized when I transferred to KU was um, I wasn't at a small school anymore. So I didn't have those classrooms of five to 10, 20 kids. I had, you know, big auditoriums full. And um, at the time I struggled forming relationships with my professors, with the TAs, and my grades reflected it. And unfortunately, I, I can't say that I was able to make the best change of that before graduation. Um, and so going into the professional world with my first job, I, I really made it a goal of mine to kind of change that, you know, get, get out of my shell, make relationships with the people I work with. Um, first thing I did within the first couple of weeks, my, my goal that I set for myself was to learn as many names as possible. Because uh, walking down the hall and you say, hey, Val, hey, hey, Tom, you know, they really, they stop and say, wow, he's only been here a couple of days. He already remembers my name. And so uh, using that as a small company uh, really helped with forming relationships and then transferring into my career with Kiwit, a much larger company, uh, was able to also help, you know, help me form relationships with the right people. Uh, some people that I necessarily wouldn't work with in my position now know me by name because I was able to uh, kind of use that same technique and just kind of get my name out there as well. Yes, great. I definitely think it's super important to learn your coworkers' names and establish that yeah. relationship because you never know when you're going to need to have that connection. That's right. awesome. I also wanted to remind everyone that we do have a Q&A session at the end. So please go ahead and leave your questions. You can start leaving them now um, and we'll answer them at the end. Yeah, Marco, I think that's such a great piece of advice uh, to learn people's names. I know I was working in the engineering field this summer as a digital marketing coordinator with Burns and McDonald in Kansas City and having people's names pop up like every time they chatted you or FaceTimed you or emailed you really helped me put a face to a name. And, you know, that is something that you don't think about when we're not virtual. Um, right. So that's kind of an interesting, an interesting piece of advice. So lastly, we're joined by Lauren. And like many people, Lauren's initial plans after graduation were interrupted by COVID-19. And I just want Lauren, if you could share with us um, how you were able to shift gears and gain that valuable experience outside of your initial plan. And if people do aspire to be in a certain field, like how should they navigate other relevant opportunities and experience? Yeah, for sure. So first off, thank you, Kate. Um, like she said, my name is Lauren. And for me, initially, when I graduated, COVID was not an issue yet, <laughs> thankfully. So I was able to get into the career field that I wanted to. Um, but when COVID did hit, being a you know medical device rep, um, doing elective surgeries and stuff, that was all shut down. The hospitals, the medical offices, 
um, you know, everything was canceled. So that was pretty tough for my position because um, we weren't allowed in anywhere. And so once COVID hit, um, you know, I really had to learn how to adapt and still be successful and stay on top of my game while, you know, things were shut down and on pause. Um, so I, you know, I attended as many like virtual webinars, networking events, you know, kept up on like the journals and any new advances that were happening, um, any new surgical stuff going on. So just really trying to stay in the loop of everything, um, kind of had, you know, shift my gears to an online sales process instead of, you know, meeting with surgeons at dinners, you know, it had to be a zoom call. <laughs> and so, you know, everything was very different. Um, but, you know, just had to find new ways to, you know, do my job that was initially a like 100% in-person role. Um, so my advice kind of for anyone going into the workforce in this climate and just in the future in general would be just be as adaptable as you can be, um, and kind of try to look ahead. And if an obstacle does come up, you know, small or large, never sit around and wait. Cause that's kind of the approach that I, you know, had seen some people take and it really makes you fall behind. So, you know, if you can, you know, take charge of anything you can definitely do. So, you know, a lot of people sometimes tend to kick back and just wait for something to come their way, but you know, it's, there's a lot of valuable opportunities out there if you dig hard enough. And so don't let yourself get lazy. Um, you know, and if, someone is aspiring to break into a certain field. Um, there are a few things that I would definitely recommend. Um, so for my field specifically medical device, it's super hard to break into it. If you don't have any experience, cause like all the entry level positions are, you know, requiring two years of experience in the field. And so it's really hard. Um, if you don't have any experience, obviously going out of college, I didn't. So something that will definitely help someone stand out is, you know, taking initiative and learning the most you can on your own. So whether that be, you know, looking up the company's website and reaching out to people and, you know, getting information that way or looking up the products and trying to learn and memorize stuff on your own, attending free events and seminars and, you know, just giving yourself an advantage to whatever you can have access to definitely do it. Um, another thing is there's a lot of additional learning experiences and opportunities you can do outside of college. So obviously I went to KU, um, but outside of KU, I found a private college that was for medical devices specifically and ended up actually going there for a couple months um, in Dallas after I graduated to, you know, get more education in this specific industry and prove my commitment to wanting to be in that industry. And so if you find something in the field that you're wanting to get into like that, definitely do it if you can. Um, and then kind of what other people have touched on so far um, is connections and networking. It is huge. So, you know, you can find as many connections as you can in the industry you're wanting to get into, and then make sure you're keeping up with the relationships and maintaining them so that, you know, when it kind comes time to, you know, get in a new interview or apply to a position, they can advocate for you on your behalf and try to help you as much as possible. And so, especially if you're, you know, you can find people that have the role now that you want in the future, you know, you can learn and talk to them about, Oh, so what are you doing that makes you so successful right now? And then you can, you know, take that and mimic that when it's time for you to take that role or, you know, what would they do differently with their interview process or what did their interview process look like? Because you might be going through that pretty soon. So that's all really valuable information. And, you know, also like shadowing opportunities or, you know, getting them to introduce you to hiring managers or, you know, anyone up the ladder, it's all really valuable stuff. Um, and then, you know, with that research and information you do gain by, you know, taking the initiative yourself, once you do get in front of those people, you can really show like, Hey, I know I don't have a ton of experience, but I have taken the initiative to learn and grow and do as much as I can, you know, before training to, you know, show that you've done your homework. And so then you can actually talk about relevant stuff and, you know, have relevant questions ready for them when you're in those interviews. Um, and the last thing I would say, you know, when you're going into interviews, it's really important that you, you know, are ready for the questions that especially if you're trying to break into an industry where you don't have a ton of experience or like specific experience in that industry, you know, be ready for questions like, you know, so if you're going up against a candidate with years of experience, how are you going to be an asset, you know, versus them? And like, why should I hire you versus them? And so you really have to be able to show that, you know, you're committed and you know, the lifestyle and you've reached out to people and like, you know, that this is exactly what you want and what you're going to do to work hard to be an asset at that company. Um, and so, yeah, for those of you have, who have a little bit of time before you graduate, start as early as possible. It's never too start, like early to start thinking about, you know, what you want to do and connections and companies and all that good stuff. 
Um, a lot of competitive companies have internships. So that's definitely something to take advantage of. And even if you don't, um, like for me, there wasn't any offered at the time of, you know, my last year. And so, you know, make sure you're at least working or, you know, doing stuff with a relevant field, even if it's not the one you want to get into. So like me, sales was what I wanted to get into. And I couldn't do medical device sales just yet in college, but, you know, I started doing other sales and, you know, business to business sales. And so getting to, you know, grow on the skills that you'll need for that next step in the career that you really want, is definitely something um, to make sure you're doing. And so just make sure no matter what you're doing, you always, you know, have that industry or the job um, goal set mindset and that you're working towards that no matter what you're doing. Yes, Lauren, you're not alone in the rift that was caused by COVID-19. I, to this day, have to step on a building of EY. I haven't gone at all, and I've been working with them since August last year. So, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so great to hear your story and how you were able to change the trajectory of your career while still staying within your interests. That's a huge thing. KU is such a great campus with great students, professors, and alumni. Thank you all so much for sharing your experience and knowledge with us today. Yeah, and before we kind of jump into our final Q&A session, I just want to let everybody here joining us today to know you're going to be receiving a link to a survey um, and details on how to get your free LinkedIn headshot and your Starbucks gift card, and that'll be texted, emailed, and dropped in the chat today. So I want to get back to our recent alums. First of all, Lauren, I think it's great advice that you shared to you know, go and find your own, um, you know, your own education on topics. There's so many opportunities, even just like Life Skills KU. You're, you know, now you've been connected, guys, with three different recent alums that would be more than happy to connect with you on LinkedIn and, you know, talk to you about their experience more one on one. Um, so just go ahead and take advantage of all those opportunities. I think that's awesome advice. So one of the questions that we have received is the importance of an internship. And so how important do you think it really is when you, when you have an internship and how does it affect getting a job after graduation? So Marco, I know that you did have an internship that led, led to a full-time job. So could you kind of touch on that experience? Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, very, very good question to start off. Uh, I'd say kind of how what Lauren touched on is any experience you can get relative to the field you want to work in is going to benefit you in the long run. Um, I myself moving around as much as I did transferring schools. Uh, a lot of my summers I spent in the classroom, so I wasn't able to get as much experience in internships. I did have one internship in between my junior and senior year of college uh, where I was able to get some really, really good experience related to engineering design and even fabrication. Uh, however, when I left college, I was struggling to find a job and, and I was able to land an internship out after college, which is a little bit, um, a little more rare of an experience, I'd say, for people going out of graduation. And even from the first day that I stepped on that job site uh, in Payola, Kansas, a little, little bit south of Lawrence, uh, I, I told them from day one, my goal is to land a, a full-time job position. And they kind of you know, a lot of them raise their eyebrows like, oh, OK, so like this, this guy isn't just getting here, for, get through the summer and go back to school like he wants to invest. And so I, I'd say whether after college you have to start with an internship or you start with a full time job, especially with a lot of people not being able to get internships last summer because of COVID. Don't be afraid to take an internship after graduation, uh, get experience with the company and, and show that you're willing to invest your time in them and the, uh, your future with the company. But at the same time, it gives you a great chance to see if what you're doing is something that you want to be doing in the long run, or if you, at the end of the summer or whatever time period, want to say, I really appreciate the experience, but I think I want to take my career in a different different route. And that's kind of what I did where uh, I, I did turn that internship into a full-time position with that company. Uh, I was a manufacturing engineer for a little bit close to a year. And then um, as much as I, I love the company, I love the people there, I, I realized there was not a lot of opportunity for growth within the company. And I wasn't ready to spend 10, 20 years in the same position. As much as I enjoyed the job and what I was doing, I'm looking for a career that I get to be able to grow and develop and eventually be in a management position. So 
that's where I was able to step into the role of Kiwit, where it's not necessarily fabrication, but it's construction, something similar. Uh, still get to manage, you know, building and uh, engineering design, putting things together, fabrication. Uh, but at the same time, it's a much larger company with a lot more opportunity. And so I was able to step into that role. And uh, also, again, it, it is a little, you know, brings on a little bit of anxiety sometimes stepping into a new company, seeing what's going to happen. But at the same time, it's it's very exciting being able to learn more and, and meet new people. And again, make, make new relationships. And so don't, don't be afraid to swap around, jump around, obviously not too often, but you know, get the more experience you can get, the better, no matter whether it's a full-time job or an internship or even just going in. If you have a, a, a resource where you can just shadow someone for a day, any, any experience you can get is going to be beneficial to you in the long run. Thank you so much for that. And we have one more question. There's a couple popping in. So Morgan, you talked about LinkedIn. So what what are your two tips for LinkedIn? How do you stay active? Absolutely. So I think, you know, the biggest thing about, you know, using LinkedIn is it's only as good as what you make of it, obviously, right? So your profile needs to stay updated. Your, um, you need to stay involved. Not involved, but I just want to say but when you do make a LinkedIn profile, you need to update it. You need to be on it. You need to be connecting with the right people. Um, obviously, I would say, you know, quality over quantity. Um, you could connect with a thousand people, but is that connect, you know, is that network really that valuable to you if you don't really have a relationship or, you know, you don't know those people? Um, so I think, you know, making sure that you keep it updated, you update it often, um, clean it up. And I recently cleaned mine up as well. But just kind of being on top of that that way. But I think also making those genuine connections. Um, obviously, I'm connected with people that maybe, you know, I've met briefly or I met at a networking event. But I think, you know, just if you meet someone, have a great conversation, or you go to an event or you meet someone on campus or at an interview or you know, even your student, you know, even your you know, your professors or any anyone else, I would just say make that connection with them. And that way, you know, you can have a pulse on them, they can have a pulse on you. And when you, you know, when maybe you have a job opportunity come up, or maybe you're looking to see if, you know, someone working at this company that way, if you do, you do have someone in your network, it's, it's able to make that genuine connection. Yes, no, I totally agree with you there, Morgan. Um, quantity over, no, quality <laughs> over quantity. For sure. Like, did I say that wrong? No, you didn't. No, you said it right. Uh, <laughs> So there's another question, and I think, Lauren, you'd be perfect for this. How can I engage with people on Zoom webinar or Zoom networking events? Yeah, so for me personally, I always, you know, definitely make sure that you are presenting yourself well in any Zoom or, you know, whatever. I actually just had an interview I was conducting for someone under me, and it meant a lot to me that me personally, I was getting off of a case and running around in the car. So I did not have my camera on. And I was like, I just have my audio, but like, you know, whatever. And I was sitting in the car, like eating before my next case. And she was like, oh my gosh, no, it's totally fine. But she had already turned hers on. And I go, you can turn yours off if you want. She goes, no, that's fine. Like I'll keep mine on. And I thought that was like something that was really cool that, you know, be present, make sure that you're ready to present yourself in the best you know way possible. Um, and so, you know, if someone tells you, you can turn it off, do not turn off your camera, keep it on, <laughs> um, you know, make sure you're going the extra mile, obviously like the smile nod is always good to make sure you're interacting, you know, try to ask, you know, if you're in an interview or a webinar or whatever, ask questions. Um, you know, if it's one person or a hundred people just try to get, you know, some connection with people. I always like to take down the names of anyone that I'm in a thing with. So if I see someone that, you know, is interacting or their name pops up, I like to jot it down and then, you know, connect with them later and going on, you know, kind of the LinkedIn thing we were just talking about. That is huge. Being able to connect with people that, you know, right now everything's pretty much virtual. So it's like, you know, if you can remember their name and go to LinkedIn and just put the, you know, when you hit connect and it says add a note or just send your invitation, always add the note, always say, Hey, I just met you from yada, yada, yada. And, you know, I would love to connect with you and chat further on if there's any opportunities at your company or what you're, I'd love to stay, you know, up to date with what you're doing or, you know, whatever. And so, and periodically check in with them 
um, and, you know, interact with their posts and, you know, that kind of stuff. So just definitely manage and maintain those relationships. Um, but as far as like, when you're on the actual webinar, just ask questions, keep your camera on, you know, make sure you're, you know, dressed appropriately and interacting appropriately. And, you know, you're not like looking off and doing whatever, um, just make sure you're engaged and you're actually listening and make sure you're asking relevant questions also. That's something that, you know, I've kind of encountered is sometimes when you're on Zooms with people and sometimes when it's a, you know, mass group of people, there'll be questions where it's like, oh, you know, so how are, you know, you doing or something very like irrelevant that isn't really that great of a question. And so try to think of more deep, you know, meaningful questions that, you know, are a little bit more thought provoking um, so that, you know, whoever's talking or answering that question can really understand like, oh, you're actually paying attention and like you actually you know, care about the substance of what's going on and then, you know, connect with that person and say, Hey, you know, I, I was the one that asked the question about, you know, X, Y, Z. I would love to chat further about that. And that's, you know, just another way that you can get your foot in the door with someone and start a relationship. So yeah, those are all really good ways that I've learned to do it and it's worked for me. So. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a great point that you mentioned making a, making an effort to ask thought provoking questions because being on Zoom and being virtual, it's a lot easier to ask questions. Um, you know, I, I feel for me personally, when I'm in class, there's questions I wouldn't necessarily raise my hand to ask, but it's so easy to pop it in the chat or pop it in the Q&A. Um, and it makes it a lot less, you know, scary as someone that's an observer, you know, to, to really get involved. So that's great advice, Lauren. And thank you all, Lauren, Marco, and Morgan for joining us today for the final Life Skills KU series. Um, everybody who joined us live, thank you so much. Everyone that's watching this later, we're so happy to have you here this week. And remember to fill out your survey and kind of get all those details on getting your LinkedIn headshot, which obviously is very important as we learned today, and your Starbucks gift card because you can always fit coffee into your budget. So thank you. And thank yeah. you, Community America, KU Student Money Management Services, and the DeBruce Foundation for helping us out this week. So thank you guys. Thank you. Rock Thank talk. you. Love it. Talk. Bye. Bye. Bye.